Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential system of equations. We have y to the power 1 over x equals 3 and y to the power x equals 81. And we're going to be solving for x and y values. I'll be presenting three methods, even though the third method will probably be incomplete. All right, so let's see how we can solve this, this system. First method. For my first method, I'm going to go ahead and write the 81 as 3 to the fourth power. And from the first equation, I do know that 3 is equal to y to the power 1 over x. So I'm going to replace 3 with y to the power 1 over x and then raise it to the fourth power. All right. So from here, we get something interesting. First of all, we have y to the x on the left. And all the way on the right hand side, we have y to the power 4 over x. Because when you have this ty type of situation where you have superpowers, then you multiply the exponents. Make sense? And from here, we can s pretty much say that x is equal to 4 over x, which means x squared is equal to 4. Obviously, this gives us two solutions, but we have to be careful are all the solutions going to satisfy the original system? Okay, so we have to check. If x squared is equal to 4, then x equals 2 is one of the options, and the other one is x equals negative 2. Now, if x is equal to 2, you can go ahead and plug it in into the first equation, or either one, but I'm going to go with the second one. If x is 2, then this means y squared is 81, right? And that definitely that gives us two solutions for y. y equals 9 and y equals negative 9. And with the x equals negative 2, we get y to the power negative 2 equals 81. And this again gives us two solutions. If you write the y to the negative 2 as 1 over y squared and then switch around, you're going to get y is either 1 over 9 or negative 1 over 9. So it looks like we kind of have like four ordered pairs that satisfy the equation. The problem is with we, we didn't check everything with the first equation. So let's go ahead and check that now. We have y to the power 1 over x equals 3. By the way, we're looking at real solutions. The complex word definitely will be a little different, right? We can also briefly talk about that. But so far, this is what I have. So now, what is the problem with the first equation? Well, if y to the power 1 over x is equal to 3, obviously x cannot be 0. And we can raise both sides to the power x, and that gives us y, if you kind of do this, to the power x and to the power x, you get y equals 3 to the power x. And as you know, 3 to the x, if x is a real number, cannot be negative. This is always going to be positive. So that gives us a restriction that y values have to be positive. So we have to reject negative 9 and negative 1 ninth, and that leaves us with y equals 9, and y equals 1 over 9. Let's go ahead and write these as ordered pairs, and then we're going to take a look at the second solution method. But before that, we can also kind of plug it in and check our work. So we got x equals 2, y equals 9. So that gives us 2, 9. Or we got negative 2, 1 over 9. Again, y values are supposed to be positive in this case. Okay? Obviously, if y is negative, then here's the problem. You can also look at it this way. If y is negative, there's no way you're going to get 3 by raising it to any power because x and y are, in this case, real numbers. Okay? Now, how do we check our work? Just by substitution, it's, it's going to be fairly easy. So, for example, if you go ahead and plug in 9 and 2 into this, 9 to the power 1 half, in the real sense, this means the square root of 9, and that'll be a 3. And with the negative 2, you're going to have 1 ninth to the power negative 1 half, which means 1 over square root of 1 ninth, and that's also going to be a 3. Make sense? So our solutions work. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method now. And of course, you can always check your work with any method. So we have y equals y to the power 1 over x is equal to 3. So that was the first equation that we looked at. And from here, we got y equals 3 to the x. And we concluded that, okay, y has to be positive. Nice and clean, right? Here's what we're going to do. 
the second equation tells us that y to the power x is equal to 81. But I do know that y can be written as 3 to the power x. So from here, I can replace y with 3 to the power x, and then that to the power x equals 81. That means 3 to the power x squared, again, the exponents are multiplied, and this should equal 3 to the fourth power. And this gives us x squared equals 4 again, and x equals 2, and x equals negative 2. But here's the nice thing about it. If you focus on y equals 3 to the x, from here you're only going to get the positive solution. That's why y is always positive. That's y. So y is going to be, if x is equal to 2, then y is going to be 3 to the power 2, because y is 3 to the x, remember? 3 to the 2, which is 9, or 3 to the negative 2, which is 1 over 9. All right? Same thing. We got the same solutions, of course. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the third method very briefly. Okay. Here's what I want to focus on. I have y to the power x equals 3. I want to align both sides. You don't have to use natural log. You could also use base y. Any other base is fine. But I want to use ln because it's kind of like a more general. And, you know, we it's easier. I don't know. So go ahead and bring this to the front. 1 over x ln y equals ln 3. So that kind of gives us a logarithmic relationship, which is nice. And then on the other hand, we also know that y to the x is 81, right? y to the x equals 81. And if we ln both sides, I didn't put that in parentheses. I hope that's understood. But remember, this is x ln y, and this is ln 3 to the 4. So 4, we can write that as 4 times ln 3. So here's the thing. We have 1 over x ln y is ln 3, and x ln y is 4 ln 3. So one thing you can do is divide them by, side by side. ln y and ln 3 are going to cancel out. Or you can just plug in, uh, replace ln 3 with this here and go from there. Anyways, this is pretty much what different solution methods are going to give you. I don't think I made a graph of it, but if you did uh, make it in Desmos, this is, well, those are kind of the solutions that I got from Wolfram Alpha. Yes, those are correct. So Wolfram Alpha was able to solve this problem. Good job on that one. And as you can see, uh, 0 0.1 repeating actually it represents 1 ninth. So they just wrote it as a decimal. I don't know why, but those are going to be the ordered pairs that are real. Well, with the complex solutions, that's going to be a different story. Maybe we can look at it in a different video, or you can write that down in the comment section down below. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.